What's up, everybody? I'm John. I'm Isaac. And on today's episode of Cars and Cameras, we are reviving the Back to the Future 88 mile an hour go-kart. One of my favorite projects. It's so simple, it's so comfortable, and a ton of fun to ride. We had goals of doing 88 miles an hour on this go-kart, but the fastest we were ever able to achieve was about 74. We still might hit that number one day, but we are just really held back by aerodynamics. So today, we are going to bring it back clean it up and install some new performance goodies. The main thing being the new juggernaut torque converter driver from gopowersports.com. You can check it out in a link in the description of this video. Honestly, I know nothing about this driver other, that, other than that people on Facebook are like totally raving about it and they say it's amazing. So I've never even seen one, so I can't wait to see it. <laughs> exactly, so we have one at home we need to take out of the box and we can install it on here with a torque converter and uh, have some fun and see what it's all about. Okay, we have to come clean about something, everybody. We tested this go-kart with E85 last year, and then we left the E85 in the tank, and we left the carburetor on with E85 in it. Of course, it was all for science. Of course. For science, just to test the long-term effects of leaving E85 in an aluminum carburetor, which everybody says never do. We're gonna find out right now. You know, it's been like six months since this thing's been sitting with that fuel in it? Yes. Just been baking. And it's so dirty, man. Mikey's yard was nasty. Yeah, that was a good time, though. That was, a, that was such a good that time. That was the time you crashed this thing into a ditch. A big ditch. Pleasantly surprised. hey -o. <laughs> That's crazy. Dude. Look at the jet size, man. I forgot how huge it was. Yeah, man. The 30% rule on E85, 30% more fuel than regular gasoline. I think we took that to the extreme. I mean, it ran great. Yeah, but dude, um, it doesn't look bad. I said we throw a new jet in it, clean it up a little bit, and we can keep her moving. Okay. All right, the cart is all cleaned up. We installed a new 22 millimeter Makuni carburetor. It's looking good, man. All we need to do is install the jug or not. So let's go ahead and take the original clutch off. Yeah. We can install a torque converter. All right. Oh my goodness, we tighten that thing up. Because we got that 265 cam in there, dude. Oh. Didn't want it going anyway. Are you okay? The shock through the <laughs> wrench. <laughs> You've been a good clutch, but I'm sorry. So we're having a fitting problem with the 30 series up against this chassis. It's not the engine's fault. We've had 30 series on 212s like over half a dozen times. So it's this cover mounting uh, piece. Yeah, yeah, and the so, engine on, or the chassis engine plate. So hopefully we just trim off this little boss and it'll probably be good. Yeah. And it'll make it explode. All right, dude, I would just like to point out that uh, cutting aluminum can be very dangerous because if you look in there, you see that the aluminum is sticking on this blade. And what can happen is you get a big glob of aluminum on these blades and the blades can explode. So you gotta be very careful cutting the aluminum. The 30 series almost sits flush up against the engine case. So we're gonna loosen the engine so it can shift around and then uh, install everything. So the new juggernaut driver is kind of mocked up. One general note about torque converters in general, guys, we, we get this question a lot when you're eating up belts. Be sure to line up the backs of each one of the pulleys with your torque converter. See how the back of the juggernaut and the back of the rear pulley are both lined up more or less? Yeah, you need to do that. So that's gonna be the back of the juggernaut pulley or your front driver, and then the back of your rear pulley need to be in unison in order uh, for maximum performance and belt life. So we can go ahead and put a bolt in here, 
put a belt on the torque converter, tighten the engine down, and we can see what it'll do. One more thing to note about torque converters. Sometimes the belts will have a flat side and a curved side. So let's see if we can get it on camera. Yeah, that side is curved, that side is flat. So you want to put your flat side up against the engine. The engine. Engine side. Sweet. So I like torque converters because they have really good low end torque and they act like engine brakes when you're going down hills. But usually you trade off uh, the acceleration in the top half of your power band as well as a few miles an hour of your top speed. A clutch is the other way around. You have bad low end acceleration, but your top half of your power band, it pulls really hard and you have the best top speed. This juggernaut is supposed to be the best of both worlds. So you keep your low end acceleration and your top end speed. So that means that once this uh, sprocket hub gets tightened down, we can turn this thing around, fire it up, and Ike should be able to spin these tires out of this garage and then hit a top speed of, I don't know, 45 or so miles an hour. And also, this engine is not stock. It has billet flywheel, billet rod, uh, valve springs, and the 265 hot cam, which makes incredible power, uh, around 2,500 to 6,500 RPM. It's my favorite cam in all honesty. So the torque of this cam and the torque converter, this thing should absolutely smoke tires. So we got some smoke. Oh, dude, I think it's just paint coming off the header. That's stuff burning off of a... Uh... Nope, nope, we got something leaking, dude. Oh, it's coming out of the... Uh... Oh, we got no crankcase vent. Oh, that'll do we it. We need to put the tube on. I'm gonna try to do a 360 with it. Okay, wait, uh, how did it feel? It felt fine. Looked pretty quick. It's all right. Did it have the low end torque? Of a torque converter. Oh, dude, I was spinning out of coming out of the garage. That's what we're that's what we're going for. Yeah. It's a good idea. So, slinging it around and over full with oil, that'll happen. <laughs>
put a uh, 420 chain on it and maybe that'll that'll help yeah the chunkiness anyway yeah but uh let's go inside because it's so windy out. all right so we have confirmed that we are skipping the chain we can see it on the sprocket on the rear pulley of the torque converter it's all shiny so uh, it might even have a little bit better acceleration if we were to switch it over to 420 chain and sprocket which is just beefier and can handle more torque that's never happened before no for us no, this is first yeah it definitely has amazing low end um between the juggernaut and the cam we have in it it it's like you hit the gas and then a second later it feels like you're already you know revving 4,000 rpm the acceleration is nuts and it gets to the top speed super fast if you do want to check out the juggernaut check it out at the link in the description of our video and if you want to buy it let our sponsor go power sports know that cars and cameras sent you i thought it turned out really great performs much better top end wise than a uh, than a regular driver on a 30 series so i mean yeah like we've said over and over again juggernaut plus 265 hot cam holy cow it's a beast acceleration yeah you hit the gas and then two seconds later you're already at the top end of your power band so it's awesome uh anyway uh check us out on facebook and instagram in between videos for sneak peeks on what we're up to at cars and cameras reviews uh support our future projects by picking up a t-shirt or a sticker at cars-cameras.com lead us out ike check me out isaac it'll be fine thanks for watching everybody and we'll see you next time